Hey you, it is I, Charlie Nina Kennedy, Princess Queen. Call me what you want, just keep it clean. Today I'm coming to you with a Q&A for my new career as a flight attendant. Before we jump in and get started, I just wanna apologize for the delay. I have filmed this video three times, I believe. Yes, I filmed this video three times. The first time my camera was blurry, the second time I just wasn't feeling authentic and it just didn't feel natural. I felt like I was trying to recreate what I had done the first time. And then the third time I was washed out by the sunlight and my hair was kind of like I had flyaways and a ponytail and it just felt rushed because I only had 12 minutes to get downstairs for my shuttle time. So. I decided what better day than today because I was standing on ready today, which means I was essentially on standby at the airport waiting for them to use me for an emergency and they didn't need me. So I'm done. It is 2.41 and I've got the rest of the day to live my best life. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, answer the questions that I received. Question number one, what made you want to become a flight attendant? So I have always wanted to be a flight attendant. I've always thought of it as one of my top four dream jobs. The very first time I got an airplane, I was probably about 10 years old. I might have been nine. Um, and my family and I went to Florida. I thought it was super cool. I remember that my best friend had some experiences flying. So I remember like talking to her about it and being like, what can I expect? What is it going to be like? And I recall her telling me uh, that I could go into the flight deck or the cockpit and um, you know just kind of ask questions and stuff and I didn't I wasn't convinced that I had access to that but I was like okay like you know sure uh, I remember when I got back from Florida telling her like the plane was kind of shaky I'm like what's that word that starts with a T and she's like turbulence I'm like yeah that one I was like there was a little bit of turbulence but like never was I like afraid or worried about my safety I just felt comfortable I thought it was really cool that I was basically getting into a bus in the sky and going from Massachusetts to Florida like that. thought it was super convenient and cool. Um, and then fast forward a few years after that, I was able to travel uh, quite a bit more. And oftentimes, actually I think pretty much most of the, like 97% of the time I was traveling um, as a minor by myself. I felt so like responsible and trusted and I felt savvy because I would see other adults kind of struggling and not knowing what came next in the uh, security process and I just felt good about it. Also this was the first time that I traveled, this was pre 9-11 so there wasn't this nervousness and anxiety and this general fear I think in aviation just yet so I think that I really kind of always felt excited about it. Anyway. Um, the more I traveled, the more I just recognized that like flight attendants were doing this as a job and I was like, wait, these people are working this flight and they're getting paid? This is so cool. Okay, where are you based? I am based in the Big Apple right here in New York City. Uh, the company that I work for, we only fly out of LaGuardia. Occasionally we'll fly out of JFK, but that's not, a, we're not a dual base. I know that there are some companies in New York that fly out of all three airports, which are LaGuardia, JFK, and um, Newark. Newark. I think it's, I call it Newark, but they say it's Newark, I think. I don't know. But the one in New Jersey. Um, and then there are some airlines that just fly out of LaGuardia and JFK, and then we just do LaGuardia, which is pretty awesome. Anytime we have to fly to JFK, we get um, a limo service from LaGuardia to JFK. So it works out pretty well. Um, LaGuardia was the first choice for me on my, um, like we have a domicile bid sheet, which is basically like, where do you want to be based once you graduate? And for me, New York was my first choice because my sister lives here and I'd been crashing with her for a few months. The rest of my family, everybody else in my family is just on the East Coast. And so that was my first choice because I knew that it'd be convenient and I'd be able to see my family quite often. Um, my second choice when I got to training was um, LAX in LA. And then I heard that you'd be on reserve, which means basically you're on call for at least three and a half years, and that is not the life I'm interested in. So I bumped um, LA from number two on my list to number eight on my list. So I was very fortunate to get number one on my list. I'm super glad. And I'm the top of my class for seniority, so I'm in a pretty good spot. I'm in a pretty, yeah, pretty sweet spot. Are you guaranteed a job post training? So I formulated this question based on a comment that I received when I posted my riddle video for you guys to guess what my new career was going to be. Someone commented and said, I'm not gonna congratulate you uh, until you've successfully completed training because you don't even know if you have a job. <laughs> That's wrong, I actually do have a job. So aviation, the industry works out quite differently in terms of the application, uh, interview, and hiring process. So I know other companies do things differently, but aviation is a whole world of its own. 
So basically in aviation, you are going to apply, you get interviewed. You get what's called what we refer to as a CJO, which stands for a conditional job offer. So the conditions of the job offer are contingent on your successful completion of new hire training. If you successfully complete new hire training, then you have a job. There is no survival of the fittest. There is no competition once you have been offered the CJO and you have accepted. Once you successfully complete training, there is a spot for you. There's a spot for every single person who enters into training. Um, so that is the good news. So yes, I do have a job. I always had a job ever since I got my CJO. Um, and then obviously before that I was working in an office, so I also had a job. Um, and I love it. It's a little bit, aviation is honestly like, it's a world all its own. It's pretty interesting. What is your lodging situation on trips? So we have our own hotel rooms. We generally have either two queen beds or you might get one large like a king bed set up. Um, it's comfortable, you have your own space, you don't share with another flight attendant, you don't share with anybody, it's your space. Now, if you wanted to turn your overnight into like, um, you know, a trip with your family, like when I go to Boston, I invite my family to come to the hotel with me, so my nieces and nephew and I, we all go swimming, and we have a good time. So I usually, um, you know, they may or may not sleep over and, or they might just come over in the day and we might just take a nap, like whatever, but I have that space. So you're allowed to welcome someone to your room, but you're not obligated to share. You're, they're just sharing isn't an option. Like you don't have to share with a crew member or anything like that. So that's really cool. Your time at your layover is your time. So I like that. Which leads me to the next question. Can you go sightseeing while you are away from your base? Absolutely. It's your time. So um, our layovers are usually about mm, anywhere from like 11 to 14 hours which when you consider the amount of time that you need to like shower, reset, refresh, rest, maybe go to the gym, maybe eat and reset and refresh you know, for the next morning, 11 hours isn't very much to go sightseeing, but you can make the most of your trip. You can do whatever you want. I've had two layovers that were long. One of my layovers was 24 hours or 26 hours, and another layover I had was 30 hours. So those are the layovers where I really like to take advantage and like go out and about and do stuff. I had an amazing crew when I went to Covington, Kentucky, which is now a place that I really love. My crew was like five stars, all of them, they were amazing. We had such a great time, and I think that was our 24-hour layover. So we all got to go out, we went to karaoke, um, it was just a lot of fun. We've had a really great time. So you're allowed to do whatever you want. Um, this, I really like this question. This made me giggle. Can you bump a skinny rich passenger after first class asking for a friend? <laughs> um, so we don't have the authority to bump someone up to another class because we don't have the ability to charge them for that. It's not a free thing. It, there is a huge price difference in main cabin versus like the comfort plus versus our uh, first class or business class. So we don't have the ability to do that. Um, that's something that you have to take care of before you board the plane with the gate agent. But if it were up to me, if it were my own private plane and I could upgrade you for being skinny and rich, you know what I like, because I like looking out for my peeps. <laughs> Um, what airline do you work for? So I work for a regional air carrier. The best way that I can describe a regional air carrier is that it is, um, it is, <laughs> so the best way that I can describe a regional air carrier is to say that we fly on behalf of mainline or legacy air carriers. So what that means is like my airline, we fly for four major airlines. So I only fly for one out of my base because that's just how our base works. But we do have other bases that fly three different um, airlines and four different types of jets. So it really depends on your base. I only fly one. Those of you who tune into my lives here and there, you probably know what airline that I fly the most or the only airline that I truly do fly. But I work for a regional air carrier and I just don't share it because I've never shared publicly where I work. Um, just for my own safety and comfort and just um, hopefully having job security. I don't know. So yeah, it's, but I'm, but I'm a flight attendant. I'm legit. I've got wings and everything. <laughs> that is all I've got for you guys. So thank you so much for tuning in and enjoying this. I'm so sorry it took me so long, but like genuinely, I tried to film this a number of times and it just wasn't working out. So hopefully this one does. It's super long now. It's 30 minutes. So I'm probably going to split it into two parts. Thank you in advance for watching. If you guys have any other questions, comments, concerns, suggestions, or things you want to share with me, leave them down in the comment box below. Subscribe, like, do all the things that all the YouTubers tell you to do. Thanks for tuning in. I will see you guys next time. XOXO. God bless.